All right, you guys, this set of notes is parabola key features. Your essential question is one in standard form. How do you determine the vertex? Um, so our first couple of terms that we're going to be going over. Um, so you have a vertex. So in order to identify the x value of the vertex, you are going to use the formula. And this is um, negative b over 2a. Um, so that's the x value of the vertex. This is also called the axis of symmetry. So every time you are, um, you'll be learning this as well, axis of symmetry. So this is the same equation to get your axis of symmetry, and you will learn what that actually means as well. Um, then once you get your axis of symmetry, or the x value of your vertex, um, then you're going to plug that x value into the original equation to find the y value. You're always going to write your solution as a point. Remember, a point is written as x comma y value. Okay, and then your next um, term and definition is the y-intercept. So this time, um, on the last set of notes, we found our x-intercepts, which we are plugging 0 in for y, solving for x. This time, your y-intercept, we're going to plug in 0 for x, and then into the original equation, and actually solve for y. Um, and then you're going to represent your solution as an ordered pair again, which is also a point. Your point will always look like this, 0, comma, and then whatever number you get for your y value. All right, so let's actually go over some key features now. Um, so for our key features here, um, this is just of a parabola. So a line with, so this blank, blank, blank. Um, you guys can just do your best to just draw this picture. Um, and then you guys will um, be able to fill in the blanks and write them on your, just kind of draw little arrows to it. So this first arrow on the left here, it's pointing to this dashed line going through the middle. Okay, so um, I'm going to write down, so this, is, this was the axis of symmetry. So go ahead and write down axis of symmetry. And this is, make sure we're going to define this at the same time, axis of symmetry. This is a line with an undefined slope that goes through, let me write undefined first, undefined slope that goes through the center of the parabola making it symmetrical. Okay, making it symmetrical on both sides. So basically, if I were to fold my paper along that dot, then I'd be able to see that um, I, my mirrored reflection would be the same on my parabola there. Okay, um, so then the next thing that we have here um, your equation, so this is was that negative b over 2a equation that will help you solve it. So negative b over 2a, and that's always the x value. So it's going to be x equals a number. And in this case, our example, um, it's going through that point right there, and that's at the negative 1. So our equation is x equals negative 1 for this example. Okay. Now we're going to go over here to the right where that arrow is pointing. And on the right, that thing is pointing to this point right here. So this is the y-intercept because it's crossing the x-axis, or sorry, y-axis. Let me write that a little bit better. Y-intercept. And then, um, so it's the y-intercept. It's the place where the parabola crosses the y-axis. Okay, so we are going directly through the y-axis. In order to find it algebraically, that's when you guys plug in 0 for x, solve for y. And so in this case, it's going through. So see if I write that point as an actual point right there now. Um, then we have 0, comma, we didn't go anywhere on our x-axis, 0, comma, negative 3 would be our y-intercept. Okay, so you guys can make these all colorful. You guys can draw them. Make sure you're doing little arrows if you want. Uh, just make sure you're having it labeled to the um, correct thing that it's actually pointing to. Okay, um, we're just going to continue on the same worksheet. We we'll just have to go down a little bit further. Um, so our first thing, our challenge. Um, actually, let's keep identifying things. So let's go to our x-intercepts now. So we're going to go to these arrows, and we see that it's pointing at this point and this point right here. So these are our x-intercepts, and then. Um, remember, our things are also called, so x-intercepts, the other names for it are zeros, 
we also have roots, and then we also have solutions. So these again are the names for all of our x-intercepts, and that's what it's actually talking about right there. So that's what we'll be starting to graph. Um, it's represented as a point. Um, so let's actually write a point. Sometimes you guys might see them written as um, like, so x equals, and then they'll list all of the um, values. So it might be like, let's actually just do this as an example. So um, let me go over and do our example here. So x equals, and I see that I have a negative 3 and a 1 on my graph. So this, I always go least to greatest, so negative 3 comma 1. You'll see it written like that as a list. So point or list, let's add that. And then, or you might see it as a point. So remember, it's when your y value equals 0. So you have negative 3 comma 0 and 1 comma 0. So those are the two separate ways that you guys um, can see those written. So either or will work. Okay. Now, um, let's go over here to our right. This is our pointing right here to this bottom point right there. So this is actually called our vertex. So this is also called a minimum value. You can actually just write minimum. And then this is when the parabola opens upwards that we're going to have a minimum because it represents the lowest point on our graph. And so the actual term would be because it's going from decreasing to increasing on our graph. That's how you know it's a minimum. Um, when the parabola opens down, then it's going to be called the maximum. And then same kind of son concept, it's because it's one of the highest points on the graph, but it would be going from increasing to decreasing, making that a maximum point. So for our example, um, you write the vertex always in a point. So we have a minimum in our case, and it's going from the point negative 1, and then our y value is negative 4. So that's our vertex. Okay, and then we have a little challenge over here. It says if the axis of symmetry were at x equals 3, so if we had a um, little dash going through here this time at x equals 3, and one of the roots was at 6 comma 0 right here, um, where would the other root be? So the other root being the x-intercept. So I'm going to leave that answer for you guys, and we can go over that together. Okay, I want to see what you guys got, if you're able to figure out that other um, root or x-intercept. Okay. So now let's go over our first example. If we have the um, determining the vertex and y-intercept for the same function, um, so our, we actually use these some of these examples, um, or maybe we didn't. So let's just let's just do these examples. So we have our f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 15. Um, make sure that we are in standard form. And this is in standard form, so that means in order to find our vertex, we have to use that axis of symmetry equation, so that negative b over 2a, in order to determine that vertex. So let's just do that one first, and then we'll figure out our y-intercept. So it has to be in standard form because you are then going to start identifying your a terms. Let me write this up here. So ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the whole reason why it's in standard form. So now you guys can see where the b comes from right here, the number in front of the x, so our number in front of our x is 8. So I'm going to now plug in 8, make sure even though the, um, it was a positive 8, you're still going to have that negative there, and go like this, 2 times, and then what's my a value? So the number in front of the x squared, there's that invisible 1 there, so a equals 1. So I'm going to multiply that by 1. You only need to use the numbers, I'm just telling you the variables and how you identify the coefficients. Um, like the a term will always be at the x squared, b term with all will always be at the x, and c will always be the number by itself. So the c would be 15 here. You guys don't have to know that if in this case. So let's finish doing the math for this. So negative 8 divided by 2. Negative 8 divided by 2 is a negative 4. So this is my axis of symmetry. If I asked you guys for the axis of symmetry, you would say x equals negative 4. Okay? That still is going to help us because that's also our point value, so negative 4. But now I have to figure out the vertex was an actual point. So now I need to figure out the y value of this. Well, guess what? I'm going to plug in that negative 4 into my original equation here and see what we get. So I have y equals, fx means y, 
negative 4 squared, put everything in parentheses that you are plugging in, negative 4 plus 15. Okay, so now negative 4 squared and negative times a negative becomes positive, and then we have um, a positive times a negative uh, 4. So we are going to have our negative 32, and then we plus 15. Okay, we can combine like terms there, or you can even do 16 minus 32 first, um, which gives you a negative 16, and then you'd have a positive 15. So right now we have our y equaling a negative 1. So that negative 1 value is our vertex. So this whole thing right here equals our vertex. We just found our point at which, um, and it's a positive, a negative, no, it's positive parabola. So our vertex would be that point right there, and that's the negative 4 comma negative 1. Now we're going to go find our y-intercepts for that same equation here. So um, for our y-intercept, we plug in a 0 for x. So I'm plugging in zeros for anywhere that I see an x, and we see that we are um, we don't have an x with that 15. So 0 squared is 0, plus 8 times 0 is 0, plus 15. So y equals 15, and we write that as a point. You Sometimes you might see it written like this, even though it's not an equation, you guys. So get in the habit of writing it as a point. We plugged in 0 for our x's, and this is now our y-intercept. Um, you guys will start getting pretty quick at this. If you look, that's our only number that didn't have the x. So our y-intercept is always going to be our c term, that number by itself. Okay, So you'll start getting pretty quick at these. Our next example here, um, let's find our vertex again. It is in standard form. I don't have to combine any terms. Negative b over 2a. We're going to plug in the b term, which is that number in front of the x. So I have a 4, and then I have a 2 times the a term, or a coefficient, which is 4, the number in front of the x squared. So I get a negative 4 divided by 8, and now this time I have 1 half. That's okay. That is our x value of our point. And so we have negative 1 half. Now we're going to plug that in back into our equation to solve for y. So 4 times negative 1 half, and then squared plus 4 times a negative 1 half, and then plus 1. <clears throat> so this is just a fraction, you guys. So we're going to multiply straight across. 4 times a negative 1 is, oh, sorry, let's do our squared. Um, so this is just 4 over 1. A negative 1 half times negative 1 half is actually just a positive 1 fourth. Um, and then let's go through and we can multiply these since that's the only thing to do. 4 times negative 1 is actually a negative 4. 1 times 2 is 2 plus 1. Okay, so now we get to multiply straight across. 4 times 1 is 4. And then we have 1 times 4, which is 4. So I'm going to simplify these even again. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And then this is going to be a minus sign. Negative 4 divided by 2 is a negative 2, and then plus 1. So let's just rewrite these down here so we can finish adding. So now I get 1 minus 2 plus 1. So we have a negative 1 plus 1, which is actually just 0. Okay, so that's our y value here. So negative 1 half comma 0 is our vertex here. Now we're going to determine the y-intercept. So y-intercept, look, you guys, I'm going to be plugging 0 in for both these x's. That means I'm going to be anything times 0 is just 0. So if I have 0 here, plus 0, plus 1, well, I plugged in 0 for my x, and 1 was my y-intercept, or my y-value. So this is my y-intercept. Okay, see how it starts getting easier? Hopefully you guys start noticing that. So when we are in standard form, the nice thing about standard form, a little hint here, is that it always gives us our y-intercept. So if we're in standard form, we always get our y-intercept. It's very nice to see um, already in that form. There are different forms we'll be messing around with um, tell us different things. So standard form equals y-intercept. You can always tell it just by looking at it. Our last example, we're going to determine the vertex for this one and the y-intercept. This one's not in standard form here, so I need to subtract this over here again. Um, you have to be in standard form before you can start uh, plugging in values into your formula over here, so that negative b over 2a. So I have 4x squared minus 16x equals 0 now. 
and then now I can start plugging in my terms. So my negative B value, B value is always in front of the X, is a negative 16. Make sure you guys bring that negative with that 16, even though there was a negative in front of that B value. And then my A term is going to be the 4. So now I have negative times a negative 16, which is 16, and then 2 times 4 is 8, so I get 2 here. So 2 is going to be the X value of my vertex, and now I'm going to plug in that 2 into all the X values of my equation to see what Y equals. And remember, we just plugged that 0 in um, to get our X intercepts or our X values, so now I'm going to make that a Y. So I have 4 times 2 squared minus 16 times 2 equals y. Well, 2 squared is 4, so I have 4 times 4, and then minus 16, negative 16 times 2, we have a negative 32, and then 4 times 4 is 16, and so we have a negative 16 left over, and that's our y value. So negative 16, this whole point right here, 2 comma negative 16, is our actual vertex for this parabola. And then our last thing we need to find, our y-intercept. Make sure that this is in standard form before you guys start finding your y-intercept. So now I'm in standard form of 4x squared minus 16x equals 0. Remember, c is the term that's by itself. So if we had ax squared plus bx plus c, c was the constant and had no x values. So we actually don't have any x values because, again, if we plugged in 0 for all of our x's, we would see that we would get 0 here, and we'd also get 0 here. So 0 minus 0 is still just 0. So our y-intercept is actually crossing the graph at 0, comma 0, and that's our y-intercept. Okay, so just to recap, you guys, um, we went through, we, in this set of notes, we identified a lot of the key features. Um, you learned what a vertex was, axis of symmetry, y-intercepts, x-intercepts. We saw what they looked like on the graph. Make sure you try that challenge question. Um, if we were to move the axis of symmetry, what would your other root be? And um, you le learned some of the terms and definitions. And make sure that you know that negative b over 2a formula helps us identify our vertex, as well as plugging in 0 for our x to get our y-intercept. Hope you guys have a good day.